Hello and welcome to Fridge Cap. If you like to eat food, then this is the show for you. In the fridge today, we list some stupid things that you hear in hipster coffee shops. Mike, Barry and I try our hand at latte art. But first, we show you three amazing things to do with apples. Apples are a super versatile fruit. You can use them in sweet or savoury dishes. And we've got three inspiring ideas for you. We'll be making apple tarts at tat 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 tan. Then we're going traditional with an apple, apple, apple and pork stew. But to kick things off, we're making apple and chilli jam. Now this recipe for apple jam, like with any jam, makes plenty, more than you need. And therefore, we've got some jam jars to store them in. All you want to do is wash them in warm, soapy water and then just kind of rinse them out. But before they're dry, these can go into an oven at 150 degrees Celsius for half an hour or so, and that will sterilise the jam jars. It means your jam will last longer. And now to start the jam, a big pan and lots of sugar. So caster sugar, apple juice, star anise and cinnamon, the chilli bit comes from, and this is up to you and it will depend on how hot your chilli flakes are. But we found, when we tested it, a teaspoon was good. You peel, I'll chop. So the important thing here is to go for an eating apple, not a cooking apple. If it's a cooking apple, it will mush down too much, but pick your favourite eating apple. While you're chopping your apples, best to place the apple dice in a glass bowl and squeeze over the juice of a lemon. It will just stop them oxidising, depending on which apple you go for. Some oxidise more than others. So I saw this thing on the telly the other day that says you can break an apple in half with your bare hands. Really? Yeah. Well, they're literally in it. I might break my thumb instead. Right. I'm sure you loosened it for me. I'm sure you loosened it for me. Once your syrup is bubbling away and your apples are all diced, we've put the lemon juice in there, which also counteracts the sweetness of the sugar, as well as stopping it go brown. They can all go in, and then you basically just need to cook it until the apple is soft, but not mushy. That could take about 20 minutes. And the way to test it, cold plate out of the fridge or freezer, a little bit of that. All that's doing is speeding up the cooling process. So once it's cool enough, you wouldn't want to put your finger in it when it's hot. But now, Look that's at that. jam. One more optional flavour. Chilli. Alcohol. Oh. So you can either go with some brandy, like some apple brandy. You can go with the spiced rum. Whatever you want, about 25 mil. It is optional. Mix it in now before it cools. Brandy in there as well? Yes, I do. A little bit. No, no. <laughs> you want to fish out the whole spices and then all of this can go into your now sterilised jars. The thing to remember is to put the lid on nice and tight once you've cleaned around the neck of the bottle and then turn it upside down, leave it for a minute or so and then you can store it face upright and all that does is the sugar just helps to seal it in for a little bit. Yep. But otherwise, that's chilli and apple jam sorted. sorted. Where are we going to start with this pork and apple stew? It's a big pork shoulder. We're going to take off the top layer of fat and the rest just literally sort of thumb pieces. You can take a couple of shallots, a couple of cloves of garlic, yep. peel them and just half them basically. To start cooking our pork, about a tablespoon of vegetable oil, get it nice and hot and then the pork goes in and you want to get some browning and some good colour on this before we go in with everything else. So it's a braised dish, first yep. you fry, then you long slow cook. So that's the kind of golden colour you want on the pork, at which point you can go in with the shallot, the garlic the time, you can throw all of that in there, keep it chunky, doesn't matter, give it another few minutes to start to brown off, and then all of the liquid. And the liquid is half chicken stock, half cider. And the time. I've weighed this out, can this go in here and you stop drinking it? That's great. Heat this up to a very gentle simmer, and it needs to bubble away for about two hours until those pork pieces are super tender. Two hours? Coffee break? Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry. Is there any chance you could re-pour the milk in this? I, I can't put that on my Instagram as it is. I only like to drink coffee from countries that I've visited. I feel a lot more connected that way. So I'm thinking of changing my name. What do you think of Sebastian Nomad? Oh, has this coffee been passed through Monkey's Anus? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Just checking. Fitzroy Williamsburg. Traeger's Piercing. Dalston Junction. 30 minutes free Wi Fi. How am I supposed to invite my novel in here? Huckleberry Timber Yard. The lack of exposed brickwork in here is just killing my latte vibe. 
You know what I love about this place? I'm just surrounded by so many free thinkers. Next up, the actual apples. So we're going to quarter these, decore them, and then fry them off in some foaming butter. Two shallots, I'll finally dice those. All these button mushrooms need the stalks taking out of them. And these bits are great for stock. Now this is if you're in a fancy kind of restaurant and you want your dish to look great. If not, leave them in and they can all cook down. Your choice. We can get the apples out of the pan. And what's left in here, in with all of our shallots and mushrooms. Okay, after a couple of hours, this is what we're looking for with the pork. It literally, with a pair of tongs, just breaks and falls apart. It's wow. so soft. Drain it off into a colander. And now the beauty is we combine everything into one big pan. Into that we can throw, because there's lots of kind of buttery goodness, the flour. So sprinkle the flour and we start to make a roux sauce. And then we're going to use the stock just to get you started. In total, we're going to want about 300, 350 mil of this stock. All of the apples can go back in. And if you're being lazy, the whole colander back in. If you want to be fancy for presentation, you can kind of pick around and just put in the pork without the pieces of thyme and without the pieces of shallot. Two more flavours that need to go into this. A little dollop of Dijon mustard and a splash of brandy. Heat this up to a bubble and then add in a little bit more stock if it needs it, you're looking for a saucy consistency. And then right at the last minute, we're gonna add some creme fraiche, some chopped parsley and a squeeze of lemon and then season to taste. And there we go. Family service, stick it all on one pot. And you guys said serve it with buttery mash some fresh cabbage. You absolute licker. A pork and apple stew sorted. sorted. Apple tart to tan. Sweet, sticky, it's got it all. This is a very, very classic recipe, as ever, one sorted twist. The twist comes in the caramel, caster sugar, a little bit of water, and this is the twist, elderflower cordial. Fancy. A little bit of that inside of the frying pan and begin to swill it around to a caramel. While we wait for that, we can do the apples. So, four apples, they're going to need peeling, quartering and decoring. Simple as that. And then we're going to finish this caramel with butter and the seeds of a vanilla pod. We're just going to cut right the way down the pod. And then with the back of the knife, go in and scrape out. What we can do is place that onto our butter so it's ready for later. And do you want to put a generous pinch of salt in there as well? I will. That will go into our caramel when we're happy it's dark enough for caramel. Do you know that if you tried to eat an apple a day and didn't repeat what type of apple you ate, it would take you 27.3 years to eat all 10,000 varieties? Next up, the puff pastry. So lots and lots of layers in there. This is pre-bought shop stuff. Place it onto a floured surface and with one of those, roll it out pretty thin. You're looking for about half a centimetre. And sorry, my mistake, should have told you that. With puff pastry, because it's in those layers and it's been cut square, <laughs> if you always roll it that, that way, way or that way. That is impressive to screw it up in the first roll. <laughs> well, is... the only reason it is, it's not the end of the world, but it means those layers will rise evenly. There we go, that's kind of what we're looking for. And you want it to have that slight bitterness of burn to cut through all of the sweetness of sugar and the fragrance of the elderflower. That colour there, I'm happy with. Take it off, turn that down, and we'll put the butter with the salt and the vanilla in. Oh, look at that. And you get a lovely, lovely caramel. That's going to be the underside of your tart de not done, not done yet. We never know. Next, we need to place the apples in. Presentation side down in a ring around the outside. Please, please, please do not put your finger in this. It is super, super hot. I'm going to stay away from this. I'm going to watch you. Do you want a stencil? I've got another one of these, which fits on top of this. Yeah. You can use that to cut yourself out. Oh, cool. A circle. Be super careful, but drape this over the top of your caramel and your apples. And then, not with your fingers, but with something that's not going to burn. Someone else's fingers. <laughs> Maybe a spoon. Tuck in all those edges. And then the whole thing goes into a preheated oven, 190 degrees Celsius, for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once the tartar tank comes out of the oven, a couple of things. One, leave it for a couple of minutes just so the caramel starts to solidify a bit. Otherwise, when you turn it upside down, it runs all over the place. Two, 
keep the hot handle covered with the tea towel because you will come back to that, Safety. get it and put your hand on it. Not good. Now for the flip, get yourself a nice big plate, put it on top. This bit is a bit of a terribly roll. Keeping hold of the cloth and the handle. Uh, easy. Flip it. it. One swift movement. Oh! And turn it upside down. Oh, he's doing a chef's dribble. Is he? Oh, that smells unbelievable. The final dribble. Ignore the mess on the chopping board. We've wiped oh. around the rest. The last thing was you guys said, mm. absolutely, absolutely serve it with a generous dollop of creme fraiche. That is a great call. Yeah. So it's got that slight tartness to cut through the rich. Vanilla pod on top. Boom. Sprig of mint because it's fresh and it's sitting in front of me. No other reason. Right. There we go. Apple and elderflower tart to tan. Sorted. Bring all the sexies. Wait, 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 wait. Just look at James's reaction to the sprig of mint. <laughs> <laughs> he was so He's happy about it. it. Go. Let's eat it. It's got to be stew first. Oh, we're gonna get to the same place. Well, it's, it's got the piquancy mm. of sweetness, isn't it? It's kind of got the tang. It's really good. But also the sweetness of an apple. Anyway, whole... come on, guys. Finish up on that. Eat my jam. Fruit and meat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cheese and chip on the cracker. Oh, man. I can smell that. How's your cholesterol? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to move on to here while you lot are cheesing off. Have you got the crunch? I've got a crunch. So what's good here is the apple just holds its form, and here, mm. cooked in the caramel, so it's almost mush, but you can still see the shape of it. What is that? Because it's wonderful. <laughs> I was not expecting that to taste that good. <laughs> I'm really quite taken back. <laughs> that's, re that's really well, good. Everybody, come on, five in. I know you want to. Get everyone in. Get everyone in on this. Go on. Uh, oh, oh, literally all. Okay, it wasn't. That wasn't a canopy. Well, that was three things to do with apples, but I hear there's actually over 37. So if you wanted to comment down below and let us know what you would do with an apple, do that and keep it clean. Yes, whilst in those comment sections, then you should leave us a comment because we read them all, whether that's um, some cooking questions or just general abuse that you think will make us laugh. Please do so because we read every single one and we try to reply to them all. Also, this is only our second episode of the new Fridge Cam show. Yeah. We'd love to know what you think about it. Please let us know in the comment section. Yeah, do that. Also, subscribe because we will make you hungry. But I think that that Fridge Cam had everything. It had every call to action under the sun. <laughs> it had three <laughs> things to do with 17 apples. And it had a lot of hipsters not actually drinking coffee. It sure did. Stick with us right now because we are going back to that coffee shop to learn how to do some latte art and give it a go ourselves. Until Sunday, have a great week. Please Goodbye. do. Goodbye. See ya. And welcome to the, um, the aftertaste. How was, how's the aftertaste of all those apples? Uh, good or bad, it lingers. That's the catchphrase, isn't it? <laughs> Is it? It's going to catch, definitely. Woohoo! Um, happy that? Yeah, very happy. I guess we better link out to that time that we went to the coffee shop to film that sketch. I'm but still... then we got taught some artistic stuff afterwards. <laughs> link. <laughs> <laughs>